they go step by step through um, this worksheet. We'll just do a few of them together to get you started type of thing. Basically what I would have done if I was actually standing in front of you going on the board. Okay. okay. All right. <clears throat> um, in previous lessons, we've learned how to go from grams to moles and moles to liters and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Well, whenever we did that, we stayed in the same compound. For instance, if I was talking about like two liters of water here, I would go liters to moles of water. Yeah. Okay. This time, the way the reason why this is different is because it's going from one compound to a different compound. Okay. And the fact that you're changing compound is making you use the coefficients and the balanced equations. Okay, you okay. so far? Yeah. So in order to do that, basically when it's asking about the more ratio, it's asking about the coefficients. All right. Okay. My handwriting is really way, way, way worse on this thing, by the way, because it has like a little bit of a delay. All right, so here we're looking at H2 and H2O. So for every two moles, of H2, there's two moles of H2O. And I got that from the coefficients. That's the ratio. Essentially what that's saying is for every time we want to use, every time we want to make two moles of water, we have to use up two moles of hydrogen. Yeah. Okay, do you follow me so far? Yeah. All right, so the next one is using that co that ratio, using that coefficient. So that then becomes our conversion factor. So we said two moles of H2 is equal to two moles of H2O. All right. <clears throat> okay, so that's now our conversion factor. Notice it's in moles. Starting next week, we're going to throw some more units in there. But right now, we're sticking with moles. But you need to realize in order to go from one compound to another, you have to get it in moles first. Okay. All right. So when I'm looking at this, it says, suppose you have 20 moles of hydrogen. So I'm going to put 20 moles underneath the H2. Okay. And plenty of oxygen. How many moles of water can be produced? Notice I put the 20 moles under the H2 because that's what we have to start off with. Okay. Then I put the X under H2O because that's what it's asking about. You see how I did that? Yeah. And we're actually changing compounds. We're going from the H2 over to the water. Whenever you do that, you want to draw a horizontal line. Okay. Showing the direction you're going and where you're going to, what compound you're going to. On top of that horizontal line, you're going to write some coefficients. Okay. Because coefficients is what you're going to use to go from one to the other. Got me? Yeah. All right. So since this 20 moles is our starting point, what am I going to do with that? What do we always do with the starting point? Uh, put it over one. I'm going to put that over one. Okay. Now, if I have moles of H2 on the top, what am I going to put on the bottom of the next one? H2. That's right. Whatever's up here needs to be put on the bottom of the next one. So I'm going to put moles of H2 on the bottom of the next one. All right. To go from one compound to another, I'm going to use the coefficients. What's the coefficient in front of H2? Two. So it's going to be two moles of H2 on the bottom. Notice some, suddenly we deviated from the whole everything always equals one mole thing. Yeah. Molar mass is grams is equal to one mole. Molar volume is 22.4 liters is equal to one mole. Everything equals one mole. <clears throat> this is the only time it can be something besides one. Okay. So where we're coming from is on the bottom. Where we're going to go to is going to be on the top, and it has to be in moles. Where are we going to? What compound? H2O. H2O. What's the coefficient of H2O? Two. 
H2. So the moles of H2 will cancel out, leaving us with moles of H2O. Okay. Okay. So we have 20 times 2 divided by 2. So what's that answer going to be? 20. And that's where we got this answer from. Okay. Okay. Let's try another one. So we're going to take a step back. We're going to look at the molar ratio again. Okay. What's the coefficient of oxygen? Um, one. One. So one mole of oxygen. What's the coefficient of water? Two. Two moles of water. That's my ratio. That ends up being my conversion factor. Okay. So I'm going to rewrite my conversion factor just so I have it. So one mole of O2 is equal to two moles H2O. Okay. Suppose you have 20 moles of oxygen. So now we're starting with oxygen rather than hydrogen. Okay. How many moles of water? So my X is going to go underneath the water because that's what I'm looking for. Yeah. When I go from one compound to another, what kind of a line do I need to draw? Uh, horizontal line. A horizontal. What am I going to write above that horizontal line? I forgot. <laughs> the word coefficients. Oh, yeah. All right. So I'm trying to get you trained to do this because next week when we start throwing in more units, we're going to start throwing in more lines and it's going to end up being kind of like a map of what we have to do. All right, so what's my starting number? I'm just going to go over one. One mole of O2. Is that my starting number or is that my coefficient? The coefficient. I want my starting number. What's the number actually in the question itself? Oh, 20. 20. 20 moles of O2 are going to go over one. I have moles of O2 on the top. What am I going to put on the bottom of the next line? Um, one mole of O2. How did you get one? Uh, that's the conversion. That's the coefficient. Yeah. Okay, that's the coefficient of oxygen. Very good. And then we have to go where we're going to. Where are we going to? What are they asking us about? Wait, what? What compound are they asking us about? H2O. Sure. Very good. So what's the coefficient of that? Yeah. All right. So this time it's going to be 20 times 2 divided by 1. 40. Or 2 cancel. 40, that's right. 40 moles of H2O because the moles of oxygen cancel. Is this getting easier? Yeah. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pause it and I'm going to let you try to do this a little bit on your own first. All right. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is balance it. What did you get for the balancing? One, three, two. One, three, two. What's our starting point? One mole of one mole of into what are they asking about? Um, How many moles? Read the question, dear. You use one mole of into. How many moles? After the comma says how many moles of NH three. So where's my X going to go? Under NH3. Under NH3. The question is asking about moles of NH3, so that's where my X is going to go. I'm going to draw a coefficient line, a horizontal line for coefficients. 
Okay, so now let's put it into the conversion. What's our starting number? One mole of N2. One mole of N2. And we're gonna put that over one, right? Yeah. We have moles of N2 on the top. What am I gonna put on the bottom of the next one? One mole of N2. All right, moles of N2, because this is a coefficient of one, that's where that one comes from. Yeah. All right, so where are we going to? Where's our X? Um, then over that, you're gonna put two moles of NH3. Two moles of NH3, and that two came from the coefficient again. Yeah. So it's coefficients of where you're coming from to coefficients of where you're going to. So it's gonna be one times two divided by one. Two. Moles of N2 cancel out, and we're end up at two. That's right. Two moles of NH3. Okay. Okay. This next one. If, if 10 moles of NH3 were produced, how many moles of N2 would be required? What do I have to do before I do anything else? Wait, what'd you say? Okay, we have 10 moles of NH3. How many moles of N2? Before I even put those numbers anywhere, in that X anywhere, what do I have to do first? Balance the equations. Balance it. And it's the same equation as before. Yeah. All right. So where am I going to put that 10 moles? Over one. Well, okay, but in the equation itself, like what what compound am I gonna put underneath? It's ten moles of what? H three. What are they asking us about? N two. So what am I gonna put underneath N two? Notice that each time I put moles, in order to use the coefficients, you have to go from moles to moles. Yeah. All right, so you already told me that I need to put 10 moles of NH3 over 1. Mm -hmm. I have moles of NH3 on the top. What do I want to put on the bottom of the next line? One mole. Well, let's just stick with moles of NH3. Before we can go into a number, what do we have to figure out? Coefficient. The coefficients. So what's the coefficient of NH3? Two. So I'm going to put two moles of NH3 on the bottom. What am I being asked about? Where's my X? And two. Okay, so what's the coefficient of that? One. One mole and two. Moles of NH3 cancel out. So it's going to be 10 times 1 divided by 2. What's that equal? 5. Is this getting any better? Yeah. You want to try the next one on your own? Sure. You want to talk your way through it or do you want me to pause it? Oh, you can pause it. Tell me what to do. Um, put an X. Or... What did I put the X under? NH3. I went ahead and I rebalanced it. Okay. All right. So put the X under the NH3. Now what? Um, draw a horizontal line. Excuse me, you're breaking up. Draw a horizontal line. Okay, to what? Where, what am I, what's my starting number? Um, moles of H2. Three moles of H2, and then draw the horizontal line. What word goes above the horizontal line? Coefficient. 
coefficients. All right. Now what? Then three moles of H two over one. Okay. What goes on the bottom of the next line? Three moles of H two. Where do you get that three from? Coefficient. The coefficients. That's right. All right. Where am I going to? What goes on top? Two moles of H three. Two moles of NH three. Where did that two come from? The coefficient. The coefficient. NH three or moles of H two cancel out. Yep. So it's going to be three point oh. Then what? Times two divided by three. Times two divided by three. And what does that equal? Two moles of You got it. Do you feel smart? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this now, all right? Okay. All right.